Hi, this is Dr. McCullough, and you know, I've been posting articles about the dangers of EMF for quite some time. And in fact, I even spent three years of my life writing a best-selling book about it. Now, it's important to know that not all EMFs are bad. In fact, sunlight is your classic example of a good EMF. And you need to have regular exposure to this EMF to stay healthy. But even with this beneficial EMF, if you overdo it by staying in the sun for too long, you're going to damage your body. Similarly, we have been exposed to natural EMF since the beginning of recorded history. However, this exposure has radically increased in the last hundred years. How much? Great question. You know, I lecture quite a bit and I ask people this in my lectures and typically I get responses like a hundred, a thousand, and some brave soul might, might mention a million or even a billion, but they're wrong because it isn't a billion. It isn't a trillion. It isn't a quadrillion. In fact, it's a billion, billion fold. Now, folks, that is 10 with 15 zeros after it. And it doesn't stop there. SpaceX and Amazon, they're planning on launching over 50,000 satellites to blanket our entire planet with even more EMFs that can increase that already extraordinary, almost incomprehensibly large number by another 100 times. So what can you do? Ideally, it is best to reduce your exposure as much as possible. The two most important areas where you can have control are are your cell phone and your home Wi-Fi router. Now, it's best to keep your phone in airplane mode unless you're actually using it. And when you do use it, be sure to use either a wired headset or even better, the speakerphone function, because you want to keep that phone as far away from you as possible. Now, the best thing you can do at your home with the Wi-Fi is to remove it completely and replace it with wired connections. Finally, probably the most important thing you can do is to create an EMF sanctuary in your bedroom so you can rest, recover, and repair some of the damage that your daytime EMF exposures create. So it's important to realize that there are basically three types of EMF sources you need to minimize. Electrical, radio frequency, or RF, and magnetic. Now, if you have a wired internet connection in your home and you've removed the Wi-Fi, that's great. But if you haven't, then it would be best to at least turn off your Wi-Fi at night because you don't need it when you're sleeping. Now, of course, your phone should be off, ideally even better in airplane mode and in a Faraday bag. So this will help radically reduce some, if not most, of the radio frequency problem. However, the building code for most residences doesn't require the electrical wiring in the walls to be encased in metal conduit like they do in commercial buildings. So this causes electrical fields to leak through the walls and into the rooms from the wires. Now you can partially solve this by shutting off all the electricity to your bedroom at the circuit breaker. And this will help quite a bit, but even by doing these tactics, many will still have high radio frequency and electrical fields when they are measured with instruments. Now, and that's the case, the next step is to implement shielding. Shielding is not the first step, it's the last before you've done the other steps. So the best way to, is to paint your walls and put shielding material on your floor and over your windows. Unfortunately, this can cost over five figures to do as it could involve removing wallpaper, painting with expensive shielding paint, and then repainting over that. And you have to be careful to remove any built-in cabinets and closet fixtures and paint the walls, the ceilings, and the doors of the entire bedroom. And not only that, but then you have to rip up the floor and install shielding material and then reinstall the floor. And once you've done that, you create what's called a Faraday cage. Now, this radically reduces the penetrations of EMF into that room. Now, I actually did this from a bedroom 
and now have virtually undetectable levels of RF and electrical fields. However, an easier and far more economical strategy would be to install a shielding canopy, and they've been available for a long time. Basically, they're, they're fabric that you place over your bed, and they drape over your bed, and, and uh, it's important to have shielding below the bed so that you have a complete Faraday cage that you've created. And this is true even if you live on the first floor, as these EMF fields can easily penetrate through a concrete slab. So even though this is a less expensive solution than shielding your entire bedroom, it's still going to likely cost around $2,000. So the least expensive solution would be a portable EMF sanctuary. This is something I've developed for myself to use when I have to travel. Now, it took me over three hard years to refine the design of the sanctuary to make it easy to assemble portable, and easily zipped up. Now, the zippers were a major problem as they created leakage points, and we needed to develop a special solution that would completely seal the sanctuary. Now, one of the best benefits of this sanctuary is its price. It's about 75% less than a traditional EMF bed canopy. It took us over three years of persistent, diligent work to overcome these challenges. We had to develop over 20 prototypes before we settle on the final version. So please continue to watch this video so you can actually see what this EMF sanctuary looks like and how it is able to reduce your exposure to these fields so you can take control of your health. Hey, this is Brian Hoyer, owner and founder of Shielded Healing. I am testing Dr. Mercola's new Silver Shield tent with about five of my different, meet well, six different uh, pieces of equipment here. So I just wanted to show you this. I am inside the tent right now in a hotel room and wanted to show you the readings on the, the meters here. So this is the ROM Electronic Frequency Master 5, 0, 0.00 millivolts per meter. Um, this is another one for Tech 1216 that we use on assessments and this measures zero to 12 gigahertz. Well, 50 megahertz to 12 gigahertz, and we got nothing on that. This is the Spion. It's one of the most sensitive meters that we use, and it has a body antenna. There's like virtually nothing on that. And then this is the HF digit meter measuring the body. I'm at zero on this one. The coronet. And that buzzing sound you hear is actually from the other pieces of equipment that I have in here. It is not something from the outside of the tent. It's so quiet in here, we're picking up little bits of RF from the equipment. This is the cornet. Many are familiar with this meter. That is the baseline reading for this meter. And then I also wanted to show this is an FM radio, so I'm going to turn this on, and then I'm going to tune it. I get no FM radio stations. All right, now I'm going to hop out of the tent. Actually, I'm just going to keep the video on so there's people don't think I'm doing any funny business. And I'm going to show you guys what happens okay so this is the, t the zipper up here I have to do this all one-handed This is the spy on. And this is outside the tent. But I'm getting outside of the tent. Maxing out just about. Alright. 
And then this one's going up like crazy as well. Spion is just going nuts. Turn that off for a minute. And then the cornet. It's up pretty high. This is massive amount for the cornet. And then I'll just show you the FM radio station. Free alternative. So you now this is all getting the stations. It's getting zero stations before. So this is the Mercola, Dr. Mercola Silver Shield Tent, an amazing tent for travel. It shields you from all radio frequencies. It's all conductive and it can be grounded. And when it's grounded, you're also shielded from the electric field. So this is a little grounding snap here, and it comes with a little snap. But this tent is probably the best portable Faraday tent on the market.